Hello and welcome to Business This Week. My name is Joy Malik and with me in the studio is my beautiful co-host. Thank you very much Joy. I am Wokocha Chewe. Today we are going to give you a rundown of most of the activities that happened this week in our business world from um, tackling energy poverty monetary and then um, monetary policy yeah, and then moving over to economic condition and so on and so on but before we give you the story in details let's go on a quick break and when we return business this week continues so stay tuned in this 21st century where all the information we need is now in the palm of our hands. News from around the world, entertainment, celebrity gossip, sports, and much more. The only thing that you need is the right source. Viewer TV is now on the go. Simply check us out on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter for all the information you need. If you're just joining us, this is Business This Week. Well, like my colleague said earlier, we have a lot in stock for you. But let's start with the rundown of what we will be discussing. Now, first, we'll be talking about tackling energy poverty. Then we'll move over to power supply. And the third one would be economic conditions. And the fourth being monetary policy. The next will be medium enterprises while the sixth one on the list is Nigeria Exchange Group. Moving over to food insecurity, then inflation rate, and the ninth one will be UNGA 77 Summit, and last but not the least, the aviation industry. All right, um, like I said, let's start with tackling energy poverty and how the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation of course, NNPC said it is looking for an investment of about $15 billion to help achieve its plan to boost gas supply in the country and generate about 4,000 megawatts of electricity within the next 10 years. Yes. You know, the, the main base um, loads to justify such um, infrastructure power plants that uh, would, would consume the gas and for that they are, they are also planning to build about a, a 2,000 2, to 3,100 megawatts combined in these three, three cities. cities. Now, the, this partnership will involve players who will bring in their various capacities as operators and then builders, builders. of power plants and then as investors also. Exactly, Joy. NNPC will also bring its strength of being a dominant, dominant player, player in, in the, the Nigerian gas, gas. value chain. Mm -hmm. You know, if you generate enough power, yeah. the multiply effect yeah, will, will revive, revive most yes. of the moribund industries mm -hmm. across the country. Yes. Um, that is why NNPC intends to capture 50% 50 50 of, of the, the gas, yes, market gas market in yes. Nigeria by growing the Nigerian gas marketing 
company. So about five hundred media years. standard cubic feet mm-hmm. per day of gas. That is that is what it is today. To about three to four billion standard cubic, cubic feet years. per I day in the next, in the next ten, ten, ten years. years. Well, still on um, still on energy crisis. You know, you know, fresh licenses are and permits rather have been issued to 37 companies, companies. to produce i think a total it's of so. 762 megawatts of electricity in order to boost power supply across the country, country. and also uh, granted, granted an aggregate capacity of um i think 200 yeah, exactly, megawatts captive power generation permit to so, i think uh, yet yeah, eight, yeah, eight, yes, eight, eight companies, yeah, companies there about and approved 25 mini grid permits and, and then the cap for each customer is set based yes. on the customer category of consumption of metered customers on the same feeder and then the customer tariff band. You know, these caps are, are also computed based on three exactly. months data of, I think, of actual, actual consumption, consumption records. records of metered customers on the same on feeder. The same feeder. Way. Exactly, Joy. And in total, the discos resolved, the resolved about mm-hmm. 212 complaints corresponding to, uh, to about like 95, 95 point thirty nine yes. uh, percent yes, resolution yes, rate. Percent there about. metering including metering billing and, and service, service interruption, service interruption. Mm-hmm. these were prevalent sources of customer complaints that accounted for fifty eight point eighty three percent of the mm-hmm. total complaints during this the quarter. quarter yeah that is that um, now let's take a look at economic conditions well going into the week Cowrie Assets Management Limited expected the market to so sustain yeah. its bearish mm-hmm. run as we head into the political yeah, campaign you know, season. The political campaign exactly. Season, yes. And in the absence of a major catalyst to trigger bullish momentum as investors seeking alpha rebalance their portfolios in, in anticipation, anticipation of, this, of yes, the direction, direction of the MPC next, next week. week. Mm-hmm. Well, we will continue to advise to advise investors to trade on company stocks yes, with, with sound stock, fundamentals yes. and uh, a positive okay. outlook amid the macro dynamics which, which uh, remains yeah, I think a, a, headwind. a headwind. Exactly. Yes. We also know the we also know the flow of funds into the fixed, mixed, income yes, fixed. segment on the rate hike by the CBN as sector rotation persists. And then we'll also focus August. on the lookout for August TPI and flow of funds August. amid oil uh, oil, oil prices, prices. oscillation. Yeah, in the week week ahead, okay. we believe investors will be focused on the outcome of the MPC meeting, meeting exactly. scheduled to hold soon to gain further clarity on the movement of yields in the uh, in the fixed, fixed income, income market. market. No, exactly, Joy. Okay, um, well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's that. that's on an um, economic conditions. Now, let's move uh, over to monetary policy. Well, in my opinion, the second quarter of um, 2022 growth print of um, 3.54 percent suggests the committee could um, become cautiously comfortable with the growth levels, given it's a much needed, needed reason, reason to maintain its fight against the stubbornly high inflationary pressures. Now, more, more so that a sustained negative real interest rate could dampen yeah. yes, domestic investment and undermine the stability of and local, local currencies. currencies. Consequently, we think the committee will be concerned about the negative yeah, impact yeah, of on capital, capital inf- outflows, outflows yes. on the external sector. Mm-hmm increasing the urge to introduce measures to send, to send positive, positive signals, signals yes. that is intentional about bringing down inflation. Also, the rate of poverty will remain elevated as the standards of living fall. Falling consumers' demand brought on the increased, yeah, in increasing, increasing inflationary, inflationary pressures, pressures yeah. will dampen businesses' sales and profits while their cost of operation 
edge higher yeah edge higher due, due to, to like the rising, rising yes, energy, energy cost energy cost yes you know this this would further be worsened by the lingering issues of uh, forest, forest scarcity, scarcity which raises the cost of raw materials importation and then the increased business cost and low profit margins would also constrain Constraint. business activities and then in, in turn, turn weigh on the country's growth rates, growth rates. You are still watching Business This Week on viewer television. But let's go on a quick break. And when we return, Business This Week continues. Do stay tuned. To News Plus on Viewer Television, I am Charles Doke. Hello and welcome to News Plus on Viewer Television. I am Jerry Malik. Hello and welcome to News Plus. I am John Matuke. Hello and welcome to News Plus. I am Ike Omar.
Welcome back. This is Business This Week on Viewer Television. Well, on, on medium enterprises, Vice President Yomi Osibanjo said the current regime will set up mechanism, mechanism yeah, mm -hmm. to ensure that the momentum built in the micro, small, and medium enterprises since 2015 was sustained beyond its exit in 2023. Mm, of course. Exactly. And what we need to do is to find our comparative advantage and, and develop, develop capacity, capacity exactly. in the value chain around the manufacturing of electric Big vehicles, vehicles mm -hmm. arms, arms manufacturing, manufacturing and, and, so so on, on. and so on. Yes, there is there is a lot of real and serious work that needs, needs to, be, to done. be done. What should our approach be in terms of the value, value chain? chain? You know, we are a huge economy and we, we, we are and a, huge, a huge, huge market, market. as well. And the problem people have always faced is how to engage our massive population in a uh, meaningful, meaningful way. way because anything you do seems like like it's a like job, a drop, like in a drop, drop in an ocean due to the <laughs> enormity of, of the, the problem. problem. Exactly. Well, um, now let's let's move over to food. food insecurity. Exactly. Now, domestic food price inflation remains high around the world. Mm -hmm. As information between May to August 2022 shows, shows high inflation, high inflation yes. in almost all low-income and, and middle-income yes, income countries. Income. Mm -hmm. I mean, the share of high-income countries with high inflation has also increased sharply. sharply. Yes, it has. With, with the ratio of about 85.7%. Experiencing yeah, high food price inflation. Yeah, in, in inflation. You know, you know, wheat, maize, and rice name prices. It. Name it. Uh, as uh, as seventeen percent, uh, twenty nine percent, and that of six percent. That for um, the maize. Yes. That higher, respectively, than in September twenty twenty one. Yeah. Now wheat and mm. maize prices are thirty one percent and thirty four percent higher, respectively, than in January twenty twenty one. And then rice prices are about 15% lower. And then the World Bank noted that the war in Ukraine has uh, altered global, global patterns, patterns of trade and production, production and then consumption of commodities in ways that will keep prices at high levels through the end, end of, of 2024. 2024. Now let's move over to uh, inflation rates. You know, the market is pricing in some Fed increases, but we are a bit worried that it might not be pricing in everything. everything. We got whipsawed in August when inflation was up to not down and everyone is nervous. For instance, let's look at Tokyo, Tokyo yeah. Shanghai, and then Sydney, Sydney. all rose by and um, but, but red <laughs> was flashing up on screens in Hong Kong. Singapore and Wellington, you know. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 as well as in Sewell. Yeah, in Sewell too. Right now, financial markets are a mess. Mm -hmm. Wall Street is realizing that we won't be seeing, be seeing a significant, significant sign mm -hmm. that inflation is easing fast enough in the next couple, couple of, of months. months, and that should and that should make it tough to buy the dip just, just yet. Just yet, just yet. Chaos in the forest markets could keep the crude, crude prices, prices heavy, heavy no matter what OPEC, OPEC and the OPEC likes plus, does yes, exactly plus. over the short term but forest vol volatility won't Less let up time, time yes. yes it won't take up time soon and will, it will and that will send oil, oil, oil on a very, very long, long roller coaster, coaster ride mm -hmm. exactly well that's that let's move over to un um, UNGA 77 summit. summit. You know, President Mohamed Obari told uh, foreign investors that Nigerian economy was ripe for increased investment. You know, the GN, the UN General Assembly is um, the, the main, main policy making yeah. organ of the organization, comprising all member states. It's yeah, it provides right. a unique forum of for multilateral, multilateral discussions, discussions of full spectrum of international issues covered by the, the charter, charter of the United Nations. And then... Exactly, Joy. Overall, the Nigerian economy mm -hmm. is ripe for increased investment. But on the contrary, yeah, on the contrary private perhaps. capital flows into Nigeria consisting, consists mainly of foreign, yeah, foreign direct, direct investments. Yeah, investment. 
that have showed uh, that have slowed hindering the financing of much needed infrastructure mm -hmm. now on aviation sector the fact is that the cost of tickets would still soar higher than what we are even experiencing at the moment i mean because, because several things, things yes. act as determining factor mm -hmm. Everything that has to do with air transport is I in mean, dollar. Everything is in dollar. It's dollar it's dominated. dominated. Yes. So if it is dollar dominated, how can we ensure business success, success. Yes, for, for our people? people. Mm -hmm. That is what we should be thinking about. Yes. Someone told me recently that a flight to Medugri is now about a hundred thousand yes, naira. Yes, a hundred thousand naira. And I said, hmm. When did, when did I travel? When did I travel? When did I travel? I traveled. I think I traveled to Port Harcourt recent, recent, and I paid about eighty-seven thousand naira for what just it is. for just going. That's just, what it is for just going and then return. How much did I spend on just on on tour and proof and tickets? Right now, but it is either you want to fly or you go by. Imagine road. someone who ha who doesn't have the resources. Exactly, it's either you fly or you go by road where where you may be kidnapped. <laughs> it is not the yeah. airline's fault that they are charging that amount of, of money. Of course, it is. But not. it is the reality on ground. It is that that requires a lot of foreign exchange. Now with this scarcity and the cost of dollars the airlines might be forced to sometimes uh, abandon, abandon taking these airplanes overseas. overseas also you know it may take a longer time to get the airplanes out, out of, of the, the country, country of course and then get them to return back to the country now now what is the implication to the passengers exactly what's the That's implication the question to the passengers of course it translates into higher prices of tickets of course it translates to cancellation of flight, flights which is unreliable schedule and god it god, is something yes, else it is actually, it's actually something else because the, the, with the rate of with the rate of insecurity in in our in, country in the country exactly it is not safe it is actually not safe to travel by road it is not it is not it safe is to not. travel by road and because how much do these kidnappers charge hmm. and sometimes even after paying such amounts of money they still end up uh, uh, killing the victims yeah, they are inhumane yes, yes they, 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 they end up killing the victims so now we all oh, we just now everything has to now be flight 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 and for someone who has the resources for, for someone who has of resources course. and if you actually do not have that resources you and now to, how many of nigerians can afford, afford flying so but that's actually the question never flew before of course but a lot of people we people. actually we actually pray and hope that the aviation industry and the and Nigeria yes, at large and Nigeria at large, our <laughs> federal government. Everybody, we pray they yes. get better. We pray yes. everything, everything gets, gets better. better, and they try to like work on the on the inflation yeah, yeah, inflation rates. Well, that's where we draw the curtain for the program business this week. For today um thank you for being a part of it i do hope and hope you enjoy the conversation as much as we have enjoyed bringing them to you from um stock markets and to the social, social enterprises, enterprises. Yes. exactly all right thank you so much for being a part of it and another interesting package awaits you next week and would be back next week at 3 30 p.m Enjoy the rest of your day. And bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>